Now, a news commentary is on the recent crisis at the University of Benin over increase in fees. Professor Lilian Imwetinya Salami is the second female vice chancellor of the University of Benin after Grace Alile Williams, and she is also the 10th substantive vice chancellor of the university. Expectedly, torrents of accolades may have been received from Nigerians of goodwill, with more expected for this unique achievement. However, we at Clearview TV must confess that if what is happening in other tertiary institutions in the country is a challenge, that of the University of Benin is a crisis. The protest by students of the institution on Wednesday, September 15, 2021, to register their grievances over the poor state of infrastructure and incessant fees charged by the school authorities, most especially the 20,000 naira increase in fees, support this assertion. University of Benin has in recent years, for yet to be identified reasons, got preoccupied with revenue generation without consideration to the student's comfort or well-being and identify errors among students without beaming such light on internal occurrences, forgetting that if learning must persist, teachers must also look inward, reflect critically on their own behavior, and identify the ways they often advertently or inadvertently contribute to the institution's problems and then change how they act. In Uniben, there is a shocking phenomenon of declining standards of physical infrastructures and the near total collapse of basic facilities that ought to be functional in a tertiary institution to thoughtless demand for fees of varying amounts proposed by the school authorities ahead of logic, a development that is financially squeezing the life out of the innocent students and their parents. From congested lecture halls to inexplicable delay in allocation of hostels to the new students, for a whole semester, even when the hostel fields were paid before resumption. Clearly, a major action that has caused concern for the students and brought dropping spirits among parents is the seeming neglect of the students' hostels by the school authority to be overtaken by bushes, making it habitable for reptiles, rodents, to struggle for spaces with students. Regardless of what others may say, it should not be characterized as an exaggeration to state that the students of this institution are knowledge hungry, that they are innocently asking for quality and affordable education delivered in a conducive and habitable environment laced with portable water and stable electricity. But as the present situation in the school reveals, one may be prepared to ask what form of education should parents expect from their children receiving lectures in congested lecture halls and dwells in school hostels with the attributes earlier described. As a matter of fact, each passing day at the University of Benin brings more evidence that the school is facing serious administrative emergencies that demand immediate actions to sharply reduce the financial pain suffered by both students and parents simply because they went to the University of Benin, which, as at my last check, is supposed to be a federal government owned. Specifically, one event in recent years that probably did more than anything else to convince Nigerians with critical interest to look differently at the out of order situation in the school was the catastrophic demand of 20,000 Naira extra charges imposed on late payment of school fees by the authorities. Was it not eventually shameful that the erstwhile Vice Chancellor Salami was disgraced and became panicked? She then had no choice but to make a U-turn over the closure of the school and also yield her concessions. On top of it all, Madam VC was made to tender an unreserved apology to the students. The solid event even took a dramatic turn when the VC found herself listening to the riot act from the visibly angry students that none of them should be victimized. The whole university community, and of course, the watching world, awaited the VC's assumption of office on 2nd December 2019. At that time, Clearview TV stated that it was important that the university came up with a new vision and students-friendly reforms and policies that will re-engineer quality and affordable education. If Madam VC fails to do something about this, it simply means our youths and the nation by extension will be faced with bleak future. Conversely, if she is able to handle the challenges, 
it will be her most powerful accomplishment for any new respect and emulation. And straight from us, bringing a radical improvement or achieving sustainable development in a way that both protects the rights and opportunities of coming generations will not be possible if you, Madam VC, present yourself as all-knowing, selfless, more intelligent, or good-looking than other stakeholders. Remember, Madam, attitudes that impeded progress all these years in the University of Benin may still be alive and active.